Welcome to the Normal Stats Channel, where we make statistics easy for the quote unquote average person. Get it? Mean, medium, mode, average? Well, if you don't, keep following the channel and you will soon. The goal of this channel is to start with the basics of statistical knowledge and work our way up to more advanced statistical concepts. We assume little to no statistical background. I am Dr. Christina Nurse, and we will start off with the topic, what is statistics and explain the different types of data. Statistics is a branch of mathematics that explores the collecting, organizing, analyzing, and interpreting of numerical data. When the data is health data or biological data, such as cancer or HIV, we call this branch of statistics biostatistics, which is the particular field in which I am trained. Now, because the focus of statistics is the exploration of data, we must first talk about the different types of data. The types of data is important because it tells us how we will collect, organize, analyze, and interpret the data. We'll first talk about four different types of data, nominal, ordinal, discrete, and continuous. Nominal data occurs when the data values fall in unordered categories. For example, race, we have black, white, Asian, or other. We can have hair color, such as black, blonde, red, or other. Marital status, married, single, divorced. And gender, male or female. In these examples, we can assign numbers to represent the categories. Let's take a look at the hair color. We have blonde, black, red, or other. We can assign a number to each of the categories, one to blonde, two to black, three to red, four to others. And see if we switch the numbers, such as one black, two blonde, three other, four red, the meaning of the categories doesn't change. Therefore, we call these unordered categories because it doesn't matter what number you assign to them. A special case of nominal data occurs when we have two categories. We call this type of data binary or dichotomous data. In the previous example, we had gender as male or female. Because these are two categories, this is binary data. Additionally, if we look at race, where we had black, white, Asian, or others, we can make this binary data by creating two categories, such as black versus other or white versus other. The main takeaway with nominal data is that it occurs when the values fall in, once again, unordered categories. Now, on the other hand, the second type of data is ordinal data. These type of data have values that are in ordered categories. For example, rate your service at a hospital. One, very poor. Two, poor. Three, neutral. Four, good. Five, very good. Or socioeconomic status, where one represents low income, two, middle income, or three, high income. We can see there is a natural order to the data. People with low income naturally have less money than people with middle or high income. The third type of data is discrete data. Now discrete data can only take on certain values. It is data that can be counted, no values in between. For example, the number of people in a hospital waiting room or the number of deaths in the clinical trial. You can't have half a person that's in a hospital waiting room. Another example is a die. This type of data is discrete because you can only roll a one, two, 
three, four, five, or six. There are no other values on the die that you can roll. And the last and final type of data that we will discuss today is continuous data. It is data that can take on any value, essentially data that can be measured. Let's take a look at body weight. A person can weigh 130.5 pounds or 130.57 pounds or 130.571 pounds. The possibilities are endless. Another example is height. A person could be six feet, five inches, six feet, five inches, three fourths. You get the point. Essentially, the numbers are on a continuous scale and can take on infinitely many values in between each of the values, which is different from discrete data. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any additional questions or concepts that you would like to be discussed, please include them in the comments section. I also tutor math and statistics in person or online. As far as my credentials, I received a bachelor's degree in mathematics at Spelman College and my master's and PhD in biostatistics at Harvard University. So for more details about my tutoring service, please check out the description. And stay tuned for additional topics as we build on these statistical concepts here at Normal Stats.